Hello, everyone. Welcome to the W3C working group, community group. Um, and we're going to talk today about an issue where certain types of sessions are, are appearing in high frequency in the, um, in the data feeds and some of the, the problems that that can cause. And but before I start, I just need to quickly just uh, whip around and say, because Stephen Winfield from GLL, myself, Tim Corby, and uh, Chris Bancroft from the ODI, Andrew Marshall from Gladstone, if I'm right, Sam Parton from Open Play, Nathan Slit Solder from Play, Play Finder Booktech, and Debbie from Everyone Active as well, and Nick from IMIN. So that's my, my quiz completed for <laughs> phase one. Um, so just to, to move on, um, we, we've got an issue. It's appearing in the data, the um, a certain type of session, and it's kind of emerged or coming to prominence perhaps after COVID where regular sessions now need to be booked. And so there's a lot of um, lots or opportunities in the data that, um, that are you know, high frequency many, many uh, opportunities, and it's kind of confounding the uh, somewhere between facilities, uh, facility slots, and the session and the session series. So that's a very crude intro. It, can anyone describe it better? Nick, or have we got uh, some examples also? Yes, I can. Um, I'm, if I if I look like I need to move, it's because I'm in the WeWork, which is absolutely rammed today. I don't know what happened to Wednesday. Everyone just thought, yeah, I'm going to come to London. It's never usually like this on a Wednesday. Anyway, um, so uh, yeah, the example here, I suppose, would uh, be that um, there's two different. So we've got facilities, which is like a squash court. Uh, you've got like maybe squash court one, squash court two, or tennis court one, tennis court two. Um, and then you've got this kind of um, some people call it density bookings or um, so like an ice rink. So an ice rink has or a swimming pool. Um, you got a 10 o'clock slot, a 10 past 10 slot, a 20 past 10 slot. And with the ice rink or the swimming pool example, you can have 100 something people in that space at that time. Um, or rather booking the ticket at whatever on the hour, 10 past, 20 past, etc. cetera. Um, with a tennis court, you can only have one person on the tennis court well, booking the tennis court, should we say. Um, so with the tennis court example, um, uh, which is how the stuff is currently structured. So we've got in the specs, something that handles that well, facility use and individual facility use. Um, that is, you've got five tennis courts, we want to book them. Um, so which tennis court do you want to book? One or five or one or two or three or four or five. Um, and the ice skating is a slightly different thing because you might say, I want to book five people, you know, I want to book my family on. So I'm going to, book them all on to that one time um, and so there's maybe multiple tickets maybe there's an adult a junior maybe you know at that time that you can book on um, and so that's the distinction and so we've been calling the, the latter thing there high frequency sessions um, which is this you know well trying to be self-explanatory with that term but it's the idea that there's there's sessions you know because you can you can do a yoga class in exactly the same way as an ice skating class has described, book several people on, etc. It's just that the yoga classes tend to happen, you know, three or four times uh, in a day. Um, right, absolutely. Um, whereas the ice skating happens at very high frequency. So you can see there, yeah, every 10 minutes. Um, and the way that you'd want to display this, I suppose, is the crucial thing. So in a, an app that's consuming the data, displaying the timetable for a um for a tennis court and the way that you'd present that with court one two three four alongside each other potentially um as some um, interfaces have it and so you can see which slots are available um that's quite different to how you'd want to display high frequency sessions now it happens to be the case that in flow those two things are presented in a very similar way so in this particular interface it doesn't look that different it's just that the one says public skating and the other one says um, you know, um, whatever it says, you know, tennis or something. Um, but obviously in, in other front ends, it might be, and it is the case that there are, there's a different look and feel to those journeys. 
um, and therefore um, the usefulness in having those two bits of data defined uh, is from a user perspective, that's why. Um, and then from a data model perspective, there's the what like we should use the data model to describe things that it describes. So a facility use is a facility use because, and that's like a tennis court. And then, you know, a session is a session because it's like a yoga class. Um, in the same way as we wouldn't have, um, you can, you, you know, we've got a people object and we've got a place object and you could, um, uh, you could call a place um, King Charles III as a place. You could also have a person, King Charles III, um, but you wouldn't expect, and you, you might name them the same, right? But you need to know what type of thing it is so that you can distinguish whether it's the person or the thing. Um, and that's why modeling is important. So um, even though you could, in theory, um, you know, if there was a list of places, you can in theory stick over people's names in there if you wanted to describe people. It wouldn't be very helpful if you were designing an application that was displaying places in a way that you'd expect to see them. And then there were other people that showed up in that part of the application, if that kind of makes sense. So it's it's that thing about describing things how they are. Hopefully that's, yeah. that's a good summary there, Alex. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's that's helpful and true, I think. So we have got um, two, two kind of issues or impacts emerging from that. Um, one is how things look. And, you know, and last time we spent some time talking about the user experience and, and data quality in that, um, in that, arena and how how the data feeds can have an impact on on that end user experience so it you know that's potentially one issue here where we're seeing um a great many um time slots for the same kind of session and that that means that the end the user experience is affected there um and then the other side is the you know, calling a a place, a person, or, or the way around. So like a session or a facility, those are the kind of things that we've described in the data specifications that we want to, um, you know, there's a reason they're different um, and, and we want to kind of, it helps if things are consistently used. So those are two, two different issues. I think that also uh, someone mentioned the third one that where you have these, um, a great many, um slots or this this high frequency sessions that the the timetabling or in json in the actual data that's being shared can can be hugely bloated to kind of account for all those different time slots or, or things so so that's a kind of performance issue potentially as well uh, in, in the sharing of, of the data in that format um, oh yeah, we, yeah. We should say that that absolutely um, be picked up. That there's a, a a challenge with using high frequency sessions with the event schedule field, which we don't need. So we can drop that, and that reduces that. That kind of solves that problem as a very isolated thing. Um, but that's not a kind of wider data model problem. That's just a we've right. got the event schedule property in there. So that that is not a problem. I made that one, or it, it's a solvable problem. So. Um, does anyone want to give it a different view or you know an alternative view or another kind of real life experience of this of this position i guess my my first question would be what kind of problems does it cause because you kind of highlighted that it doesn't necessarily model the data when you've got um kind of thousands of sessions a day or what however many so it's the issue in that we basically have a model halfway between a facility and a session. So if we count a session as something that happens infrequently and a facility slot as something that happens very frequently, it's the issue we have something kind of in the middle. Well, I suppose the um, model is describing the thing rather than the kind of frequency of the thing. So there's we've got events, we've got courses, we've got sessions, um, and we've got facilities. And they're all different types of, you know, a thing that happens at a place that you can book onto. Um, so this, yeah, this new thing is, is the problem is that you could, you could say technically it's a session because it follows some of the session nuss from that. But the problem with that is that it's so high frequency. So as you say, we kind of create this new category of thing that the session spec didn't really account for, which is, yeah, high frequency 
sessions or something, which blows up the user interface. That's the problem. It's you can you can do it. You can use it use it like the same as it is currently specified. But if you don't have a little marker that says this is a high frequency session, then someone could and and has and we've had, that's why we introduced the the beta field in their high frequency sessions to filter out the stuff that's just loads and loads of of things. Because if you're expecting to put three yoga classes on a user interface and then you get you know a hundred then obviously your, your, your scroll bar blows up and all the stuff that you design doesn't really um, work for that. So, so there's, there's one of the, another of the impacts that, that are coming out, that the data um, on opportunities is, is being filtered out and not being presented because of the challenge caused by this, you know, the number of rows. You know, is, that's, that's kind of one solution. Okay. Uh, well, so be, fil fil filtered out, but filtered into other, another interface. So for example, in the Manchester project, there's two views. There's the high frequency view, which shows stuff as a timetable. Well, not a timetable, but you know, as you'd expect it to be if you're booking high frequency, very small little times that you can press. And then there's a different view, which is your yoga classes, which are much more fully described as full sessions with some details in them. Um, and so you, if you've got high frequency stuff, you display it as that one. And if you, you know, um, if you want the other view, you display it as the other one. Some some finders, you're absolutely right, haven't built that view yet for the high frequency stuff so they're just filtering it out so that's definitely the case that because they haven't figured out how to deal with the volume it's just quicker to filter out and worry about it later um, a lot of the terminology that we're using is about sessions but to me i mean if we can come up with some counter examples that would be great but to me it feels more like just a, a shared use of a single facility rather than necessarily sessions. So I'm not sure if that counts, because like swimming and ice rinks are the obvious example where there is a facility and there are just multiple people using it at the same time. So I'm wondering if it's going to be easier to model it by leaning more towards it's a facility that has multiple people on it at the same time, or is it going to be multi-session? Because you're not actually booking kind of one thing, you're booking time in a space for all of the examples golf so that's a, is, is the other another example which which follows that same pattern yeah yeah sorry I, I don't know howard do you want to bring up the issue um and there's a table in it which is mm -hmm. might be quite helpful at this at this point um because that's a really good that's a really good point Nathan. absolutely you could go either way with this it could be a facility or a session if you wanted to you know um, i suppose it's a semant semantic question uh, so this is 301, issue 301, is that that's the one you mean? Yeah, and there's a table some way down Indeed, that yeah. page. Uh, hopefully you can now see that screen. Yeah, that's it. Uh, so if it, is it big enough for everybody? Do I need to zoom in? Um, is this the table you're talking about or is it, there is another one? No, that that's is. right. Yeah, no, no, that's the one. That's the one, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So yeah, absolutely. So so Nathan, absolutely to your exact question, uh, you know, what is what is this? Is it is it a session or is it a facility? Another way of because obviously there's a semantic thing which we could argue either way, and then there's the um, there's the kind of what is it by what it how it's described, like what attributes are going to be associated with it. You know, what are the useful things to say about the the, the thing that you can attend, and what what's listed here is um, the properties that are currently defined on a session. And the properties that are currently defined on the facility kind of next to each other so we can kind of compare and contrast what it is that is already in one versus the other and the interesting thing about this list is that although we could make an argument for session or facility from just a very high level kind of conceptual perspective the stuff that you want to say about it like age restrictions or um the uh what's further down the leader if there is one um the uh the level uh, of that session the what's the other ones on here attendee instructions uh the activity versus the facility type so it, it would probably draw from the activity list um as you're you're booking ice skating or swimming rather than a swimming pool or a um I don't know, ice skate ice rink um, you're not booking ice rink, you're booking ice skating. You could book an ice rink. That's the other interesting thing about this. You could book an ice rink, right? You could book the swimming pool, but that would imply you book the whole ice rink in the same way as you book the whole tennis court. 
um, and that would be you know the facility type ice rink and I suppose though if there are examples of you know I don't you wouldn't book a whole gym would you or a whole golf course well maybe you would book a whole golf course um, for a competition or something um, that that's more kind of on the facility side um, so I don't know what, how does that what, what do people reflect on that Nick, just a couple of comments on that one. Realistically, the last couple of examples you gave aren't particularly realistic because you wouldn't expect anybody to book a whole golf course and a whole swimming pool via this route. There'd, there'd yeah. be different ways of booking it out. So we wouldn't expect anybody to go to use a, a, a third, party, third party booking source to book the whole swimming pool. It's just not, it just wouldn't happen. Absolutely right. And so I suppose part of this is, you know, the model might not be, it's, it's like, what's the accurate model, but also, you know, not all of it is going to be bookable in the same way as, you know, when we talked about people and places earlier, you know, that we, we might want to book either of those things, but it's still useful to describe, you know, accurately using this, the terms in either case, if, if you see what I mean. Hmm. I think what you mentioned about age range and restriction is quite interesting. Uh, because, yeah, that makes a lot of sense for when you've got kind of like sections of time booked out for children, ex for example, which doesn't necessarily fit in the facilities. But maybe it's kind of pushing for the case, which I think is what we're vaguely kind of leaning towards, is having another model between session series and facility use that does have these properties and can potentially have all of the items from both lists all of the well, so relevant that, ones anyway absolutely right so that's yeah so um that's actually um i guess where we get to in the, with the, which is further down if, um if we carry on scrolling but i guess before we get there does anyone else have any comments on on what we just kind of to kind of catch up with where we are with that as nathan's kind of explaining um yeah we use density and and that sort of thing, which I think it, this is what is being referred to here. And so examples such as soft play um, is one where we wouldn't restrict somebody to turning up at a particular time. Um, like it's not just 10 o'clock in the day. Um, they could turn up every five minutes throughout the day. And for each hour, there is a maximum capacity. Um, so that's another sort of example of that design that you would be looking at, I think. It's really helpful, soft play. And is that similar to the ice skating in that you've got like, is there a time you book on every 10 minutes or do you just book on? Um, yeah, you, you, it depending on how you set it up in MRM, the frequency of the activity could be, it, it, you can book to start every five minutes. Um, uh, it's, it's, a, it's an activity which is the same as a facility um, in MRM world. Um, but then you've also got the other option of where you, what you talk about ice skating. Um, that's slightly different for us. Um, ice skating are scheduled sessions in our world, but you can book multiple people into those scheduled sessions. So you can bring other individuals with you. Interesting. Does the soft play... Oh, sorry, Tom. Who's going to say something? Um, does the soft play have a have a kind of um, is there like a leader for that day or a, or you know the main the main person running it that is named or anything like that? The oh, kind no, of instructor. This is this is the realms of when you've got children, Nick, and you have to go and sit in a soft play on a Saturday afternoon because it's raining. No, there's no leaders or anything. It's just a big area of an open sort of. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Do you know, the, the, the big structures and they just go wild in them for three hours and then you take them home exhausted and sweaty. Yep. There's no yeah, 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 yeah. I was thinking of like, like that. <laughs> that's, that's I was thinking of like, like when a sports hall. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> um, another parameter there though that um, where it's almost open ended. Right. You pay to go into your self play and you, you you know when you go in, but there, there's no fixed slot or schedule duration. I don't know. Is that right, Debbie? You, you, you pay for uh, an hour. I mean, yeah, from an MRI perspective, it has to have a duration. It has to be configured with a duration. So I guess it would be, be open-ended. Wow, I'm not sure who that is. 
There's some background yeah, I... noise somewhere. Right. Yes, yeah, so I was just, I just unmute, I'm muting myself so I can contribute. Oh. Just following on from, De from Debbie's thing, I think I was going to say something. Um, the, the, and again, for everybody else's benefit, I guess, um, the, 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 this, this problem has arisen for GLL and for OpenPlay because um, the way we schedule um, our fast tickets and our, well, our ad hoc sessions. Um, and and we, we, we got fast, an example of fast tickets works very well for us in that um, they're, they're anonymous. Um, you, you can buy a ticket for yourself and your whole family and you can book into a session, you can book into any one of the slots that we advertise. Um, and there's no age restriction, there's no gender restriction, it doesn't matter who you are, you just buy a ticket for yourself and for somebody else. So, uh, so we don't need any restrictions behind that. We, we, that's where we designed it with open play. It's just something that customers can do really quickly and they can do for multiple numbers of users. Um, the, the one that causes the problems is the ad hoc sessions where you're, you've got the high frequency activities, but you're buying it just for yourself. So therefore you have to be recognized by the system, you've got to be a customer's minimum, ideally a member, but you can just be a customer. And you're booking into a slot that other people can book into. But these are the high frequency ones. And these are the ones we've got the problem, we had a problem in Manchester with that we had to redo, redo and reschedule everything in Manchester just to conform to the standard. Um, but we can't do that across the whole state because we didn't want to do it in Manchester. We were kind of forced down a pathway to achieve a, a requirement. Um, so, so we did. Uh, and and that, that's where this has come about. So I, I recognize what Nathan is saying, actually. And I'm going to agree sympathy with Nathan's approach on this. Um, but um, uh, but I just thought I'd just call it out so we've got a little bit of background information as to where this particular problem stems from. And can you can you just tell us a little bit more? Maybe just, um, you know you had to re redesign or reschedule things from what to what you know to, to what 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 were the alternatives that worked better? Um, yeah, so, so we had a particular problem with the way we scheduled the gym, and we had a particular problem with the way we scheduled the um, swim for fitness activities, um, because they were scheduled as what internally we call ad hoc sessions, and Sam will be familiar with that, um, and the ad hoc sessions didn't conform, didn't fit into the right feed, they fit, they, they were, they, as, as it's just been explained earlier, they fitted into the sessions feed, but they aren't true, they aren't pure sessions. Um, so therefore we had to redo them and we had to redo them as, as and I think we've just done them as, as ad hoc slots, if I remember right, that's what we changed them to. So they do conform to uh, one of the open fees. Ad hoc slots, so that they, they conform as a, as a facility use, um, which is, so, yeah, so the, so within the flow system, there's a specific thing where you can basically make a facility have more than one, like Debbie was explaining, kind of high densities. Um, so that that in within the open play system is a um, is done on the facility side, and so that comes out of the facility feed um, rather than out of the session feed because that's where in the system you configure it. Um, and I think I think well, as as kind of Nathan pointed out, and others have kind of alluded to, it's. The problem is we've got something that's halfway between two things and so depending on where the system is you know how the system's been built it will either come out of one or come out of the other um and it's it's the conforming to the, the question is do we pick one do we pick the other or do we have a third one that's neither of those so that we can all you know uh, everything can be aligned so i'm here from open play just in um regards to the flow aspect here just jumping in um Obviously, we've tackled this in a certain way, which makes sense for GLL and other clients. And there's other parameters, I think, which people don't might quite realize. So again, around the concept of family and memberships and promotions and stuff, which also needs to be factored in further down the line. But um, I'm just looking at like potential solutions to this, obviously. And I mean, our stance is that the system is built this way. It's kind of the way it works. Um, the, the framework's really got to fit around what we have in place and is live. Um, Want to obviously want to help and shape it in any way, shape, or form at your end, but I, I don't really know what the ask is here in terms of solutions. Like some clarity in that would be useful. Sure. So I, I guess the I guess the the challenge with any standard, I suppose, is that obviously every system needs to do some work to to meet the standard. 
you know, if we were talking about USB ports on iPhones, you know, the European Commission's just kind of said, everyone needs to use a USB-C port. Obviously, Apple's now got to do that. And that's not necessarily what they wanted to do, but in order to conform, they have to, they have to do something slightly different. So, uh, but this, is, this isn't about changing the product. This is just about changing the feed that the stuff comes out of. So the product stays the same, but there's the translation layer there, which is how do we get from whatever's in, you know, Flow or Gladstone or whatever it is, out to the feed and then what should the feed look like so is it you know high frequency session stuff which is currently the the one that's 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 in that issue is it as nathan's saying something about facilities is it or a third thing uh, as nathan's also suggesting as as a, something else uh, which is another set of feeds and then obviously whatever one we choose there's some work necessary across the board for everyone to do some work to change that that's the What's challenge it? obviously so, is it, so just start just to make sure i'm crystal clear so the specific ask from OpenPlay and Flow here is um, the Open Active, I guess, comes up with a solution. OpenPlay doesn't have to change its product, but does have to do work in order to conform to this new way of working and feed. So we we have to schedule in developer work in order to kind of adhere to this. Is that, is that what you're saying? Well, just... as, every, as everyone would do eventually, that's right. Um, but, that's, but that's the way the standards work. So if if there's if there's a change to the specs and we all agree and you're part of the conversation we're all part I, of the I, I, I can can, I can, consensus. not to be not to be inflammatory here but i can categorically state there's no resource for that i think um so so but I, there's, there's, there's two separate solutions. issues yeah there's two separate just, challenges just, here so there's just, the, just to finish my yeah. point here there's there, there is no resource for this i would love to there to be a resource for this um how do we find a, that go over that impasse? Because that's obviously I just need to be realistic as to what I can get our team to do. So I, I think um, yeah. So this today I think is is just to understand the, the problem, the scale, you know, the impact on people like yourself. So we don't have to to do that. You know, what what does it mean for the standard? Um, what happens if we, we can't we can't fix this? You know, and just to get a better a better picture. And um, you know, this is the position we're in now. Um, in six, six months' time, when you're working on the next next, situ next situation or the next implementation, you know you might have an opportunity to do it differently. We've got to be realistic and, and kind of work, find a way forward. Uh, but it's uh, as Nick says, you know, the standard we can't. The idea of a can of a standard is to kind of promote consistency in um, to allow people to do to to do exciting things with the data and get people moving more. That's what we're all working towards at the end of the day. Uh, so, I, I, I fully understand. I, I, so it's interrupt again, Harold. I fully understand the idea of the standard. We've been very supportive of it. We've done the uh, yeah. phase one, doing various tweaks. We fully understand that. But this is a very, very complex area scheduling. And you've got to imagine someone with GLL size, 260 odd centers, the parameters you have, the flexibility. There's, a, there's obviously a way you build a system, there's a way it's designed. We're not stopping here. Innovation as well. There's things here which I think are not that advanced from what I can see. Um, if if the ask is that the framework doesn't bend to systems like us, then I think that's a significant problem. So I just I don't want to beat around the bush on this. I want to highlight this. Um, that the stance from flow and open play is that the this standard is going to have to fit around modern systems like ours. Simple as that. So, so what, what might that look like? You know, what you know, is there looking at the table on that screen, um what what changes would you make to to reflect what what do you uh, that's that would have to go back that would have to go back to my team it's too technical for me i'm afraid so you know, it, uh, I, I could put that back to the team and try and find resource to help input obviously we want this to happen so yeah no problem well, yeah and we, we, we want to, to gather all the views we want to you've mentioned resource you know we want to use your resource wisely at, at the right times to, to to have an impact uh i don't uh andrew or, or or Nathan, have you, have you any any further thoughts on like ways forward or how it work, might work in your systems? Yeah, I mean, basically, we just need to work out a way that's not going to break any existing functionality um, with the changes and allow us to implement new functionality at a time when we all have time to actually do that. So I'm very much in the kind of frame of mind that we should come up with a solution that is backwards compatible i know we've not technically reached version one of the spec yet um but because we're starting to get to a point where quite a lot of systems uh, such as are already in production being used by quite a lot of people uh we have to be very careful not to kind of make any backwards compatible breaking changes 
Um, it's one of the reasons why I suggested this kind of like third option, because I believe that's kind of the simplest thing to then add into a system um, to change the current system. Um, whereas kind of additional flags and things like that, although are quite easy to change, do require a, a change rather than kind of like a consistent, fairly well-defined development. Yeah, so it might be worth this in a second, I guess, moving on to just looking at the pros and cons of those, because that does sound like a really good place to get to. And then I guess if in Sam uh, mentioned there, if there's time and resource on the open play side, it might be worth them reviewing the video and we can, you know, obviously they might have a view on what we're talking about here from a kind of technical perspective. And that might be a good way of um, feeding back into the issue or, or something like that. I'd probably say probably in line with what Sam's saying as well, you know, we, we, we're all pretty much heads down with full up development roadmaps for the next couple of years. So it's kind of work, you know, we want to work with our partners and we want to make six, 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 you know, work for work for the industry, but it's kind of, I'm still struggling to see what, where the gaps are with the evidence that the bits that we would need to develop would actually make a difference. In this specific case, you mean, Andrew, the, you know, what changes would make? Yeah, I mean, are we pushing too far already that, you know, we're trying to do things like crash and things? Are, are, is that, you know, have we, got, have we got evidence that that's actually a high priority? That's well, well, I think it's Stephen could answer that question, essentially. Because we've got a thing Stephen yeah, in Manchester. Not priority for us. Not priority for us. What's that, that last example, Andrew Corbett. No. So, Stephen, and what I was referring to there is when we spoke before about opening up data, and there were some um, questions about GLL opening up data from all the estates, from the whole estate, sorry, um, because of the data not all coming through. Um, and there was, a, there was a question about the priority of that. And that's, that's partly what I think, well, I, I know it's driven the, the kind of urgency of this call. And um, do you think, it, it was, is that still a, a challenge for GLL or are you kind of figured a way around um, that? No, it's, it's not necessarily a challenge for us. Uh, we, we, we've started to um, uh, enable all our facilities as open active enabled. Um, we started that process working with Sam and his team, um, doing it in a, um, a bit of a triple feed fashion. So um, we had a couple of drivers for that early on this year. Um, we, we've achieved those, so that we've got about 130 locations which are now open active uh, enabled, um, predominantly London and of course the Manchester um, project that we've been working on, Nick. So, um, so that, that, that's done, but with, with a caveat um, outside of Manchester that not all of our data is visible, and that's because we haven't rescheduled the activities that don't conform to one of the four data feeds. So therefore, you're not seeing all of GLR's data, despite the fact we've made the facilities and all the activities open, active, and enabled. So I suppose the question is, what, in terms of, is that something that we want? So there's, there's obviously some steps here. Like, if we came up with a solution in these calls, maybe not today, but over the course of one or two more, and some other technical people have gone involved, then there'd be a way to actually implement that fix, and then that would obviously be fixed. So there's, there's a kind of there's steps here to, to, to do that. Um, and I suppose the question is, is it something that we want to do to fix this problem so that we can get that, that particular type of data out to, as you say, have a complete timetable from GLL's perspective? Is that something um, worth pursuing? As it currently stands, there isn't resource allocated to this area. We, there is a resource allocated to amending some of the uh, phase one feeds for Open Active. I think there's some tweaks coming through and just been scheduled in. But like I think what just Gladstone just said as well, Andrew, um, very full roadmap for the next couple of years. So to to it'd be fantastic if you came up with a solution to this, which then our team can review. But I can't turn around and promise that there's going to be work on this because um, I think I, I can speak on behalf of many operators in GLL when I say there's a massive crisis at the moment. They're, they're facing huge gas bills, electricity bills, many, many million pounds elevated. So anything which increases um, or reduces costs or increases revenue has to be prioritised. So there's you can probably understand why there's such a difficulty in bringing some of this stuff ahead of other bits. Um, I think that context needs to be presented as well. But if a solution can be found, which we can then review, then fantastic, we'll look at it. But I can't give any timelines or promises as to when that is because that's not that that simply isn't the case with how our 
development works. Hope that's hope that helps. And I think yeah, you know, I mean, the language Nick used there about uh, you know, it, it's broken. Uh, from your point of view, it's not broken. You know, presumably you, you, the, the the system works. Uh, absolutely, it's doing many many bookings as you can imagine, and um, not just that. We've scheduled in further modules and things which intertwine with this. You know, on a very very firm strict roadmap really for 2023 so there's it, it, you're if you're asking if the ask is for us to mend that to this you, you can see the challenge we have especially with the context of the what the operators are going through i mean it's it's really significant um this I, I can't be forgotten well i was gonna I, yeah so just to kind of trying to pull out some of what was stephen was saying and some what Sam was saying there, there's sounds like two things. There's the, the system working, which obviously Flo's done an incredible job in a very short space of time and created something really great. And that's working very well for GLL as a platform for people who use the GLL app or website to make bookings. Um, and then there's the open data feed and what's currently coming out of the feed and is in use by, and that's where the gap is. The gap is, I'm not saying that the flow system is not broken, not to my knowledge. It's the gap in the data feed. And that's the question, which is a, um, it, how much of a concern is that? And it sounds like Stephen's saying not much actually. It's not blocking them from opening up data. No, but it's not just it's not just that because you've got also we've got other clients live, not just GLL, and you have certain clients where the last thing they want to do is an open data feed. Literally, the very last thing. Take Eton College. The last thing they want to be doing is opening up that facility wider. The Hurlingham Club the same. So, from our perspective, we have to cater for obviously for GLL here, but yeah, we have to cater for all these other ones who don't want anything to do with this. And I'm sure it's the case with Gladstone and all the other systems as well. Like you have some actually some very close facilities. I wish it was otherwise, but that's just not how they operate. Sure, uh, but, that, but the, that's a separate. Uh, yeah, it doesn't necessarily undermine the the need for this to exist as a, for the sector, but I suppose it just speaks to the mixed priorities of the systems. Is that fair? Yeah, precisely, because it's what drives revenue to our business. Yeah. Yeah. Can, can I just can I ask a question of um, Andrew and maybe Debbie as well? Is this is, is this just a GLL problem with the data feed? It, or is is um, Debbie you having an issue? Uh, you know, is all your data uh, available through the subsequent feeds and displays and being consumed by whoever? as you expect it to be or, or have you missed in this situation between the jail finds itself i can't see debbie on screen debbie did say she had to leave at half past so sorry stephen <laughs> <laughs> i can i might be able to help with that one actually because, and, because and of the system. System. oh that's it oh yeah there we go yeah i i mean obviously nick's aware of this as well but um you know a part of this that that keeps coming back to my mind as well is 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 as you'll appreciate Stephen is is how a lot of these things are actually configured in the system that the the flexibility that we've had to build into leisure management systems means that you know you could have GLL configuring badminton courts as per person where everyone acted could add it per court and suddenly the, the feed is completely different than the rules and regulations that sit behind it, just for what most of us on this call would think is exactly the same activity. You're gonna get two completely different feeds of data. Uh, so speaking from a data consumer perspective, the, um, the, the data coming in currently coming out of Gladstone, everything's in the sessions feed. And so um, what we're doing to solve that right now as I'm in is we're manually tagging high frequency on the sessions in Gladstone that are high frequency to filter them out. That's the bit we're doing, but it's all coming through the sessions feed, but that's a very relatively small thing to do because high frequency sessions are all in sessions. Um, so there is a little bit of work going on as in, we've, we've done a little bit of work there to make it work with Gladstone, not needing to introduce the high frequency flag um, to, to solve that problem. Um, yeah, but it's only because they're all sessions anyway, I guess is the, is the thing, whereas in flow, they're split between sessions and facilities and flow has the high frequency flag in sessions and obviously it works for some high frequency stuff but as we've just discussed there's some stuff which ends up in facilities and so with flow it's actually split between two feeds right now yeah okay that, that, that makes sense thank you so i mean and a fourth option which which isn't there I mean, we and it's not one we want to go down but you know like 
Nick says it's possible to manually intervene um, and, and translate the data in, into a, a different format. So um, we'll include it for, for completeness, you know, the idea of an adapter, some kind of um, in the data pipeline that can improve the consistency of these feeds between feeds. Yeah, so I think there's an interesting one. So basically, if that's that's just speaking to the implementation question, let's say we come up with an a solution here, whatever we decide, and there's some feeds that don't conform. It could be that you know, organisations like I'm in do extra work to, you know, if if that's the thing that makes sense to to conform that data to like make it look like the right type of data. Um, I mean, it's just who does the work, right? It's like who's got the biggest backlog who can, you know, make make that point about backlogs, and 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 I guess it's down to clients like Manchester to figure that question out across all the organisations that are engaged. Who should do that work? Um, um, no, I think I think jumping on that, who should do the work is whoever's profiting commercially from that work, and I believe that's Iman. So I think this, it makes complete logical sense for you to do that work, and not us. So Iman wouldn't be profiting from the the data being fixed that's just that's just a that's just a cost of so that fix well i suppose if i'm in did that fix but then i guess playfinder would do that fix separately and then sports would do that fix separately if we guess if everyone doing the if everyone consuming the data is is kind of doing yeah, a workaround a, separately yes I, I would put it onto that end to fix and um schedule it into your own workflow yeah, and then then we have a wider question, which Howard will be aware of, which is how difficult the ecosystem is to plug into, and everything that goes into that bucket of things that you need to do to use the data that are workarounds or whatever makes Open Active more difficult for a new player to come in and engage with because they're they're another barrier. Totally understand why we might want to create those barriers. It's actually good for I mean, you know, and other businesses that are already doing what we're doing to make that more complicated. But from I don't an ecosystem want barriers. I don't want, you know, we're, exactly. We're trying to remove those barriers, but uh, right, point, absolutely. Yeah. We all want to remove the barriers. It's it's it's, it's the, most, the value. complexity. Of, the complexity of scheduling as well. If we get back to that, is very very difficult when you've got it at enterprise level with someone on GLL size. So there's a certain way of tackling it. Um, as I say, like it. I mean, from an open place standpoint, we are making our own API anyway, that's within our plans. And that should provide the ability for people to kind of manipulate the data accordingly anyway, as for any system for that matter, um, within reason. So um, we're certainly supportive of this, but I think, as I said, the work I would say has to sit the likes of IMIN and those front end portals where the revenue model there is, whether through commission or charging people like Manchester Actor, Active, that's where surely the work's got to be done. I don't think it's fair to put it onto someone here in this regards because there's no commerciality here for open player flow. I don't believe there is for Glaston either. Well, I mean, basically what we're speaking to there, Sam, is, is an open ecosystem versus closed. Because you know, let's let's just take the extreme example. If we didn't have open active and Iron was integrating directly to open play, and you know, there was a completely closed solution there which only worked because Iman had done all the work to integrate with open play then that would be great for IMIN and for others that did that extra work to do that. And obviously that adds up over a number of systems, number of integrations, et cetera. And that's what Active is trying to solve is that burden of integration across all the systems in the sector is so enormous that it's preventing new organizations from joining and doing the stuff that, that, that we want them to do, right? Innovate in the space, in the sector. And so Open Active is trying to solve that innovation challenge. So we definitely can get around this by I'm in doing a lot of custom work at the extreme end, right? We don't even need Open Active then. And you know, we just we just park that whole idea. But I think the bigger vision, and I suppose what this call is supporting is that we lower the barriers so that you don't need an I'm in in the middle to make all, do you know what I mean? I'm in's a convenience for users that want to plug in and, and not build certain functionality themselves. It's not necessary, but it becomes necessary if we overcomplicate the specs to some mean i don't agree with that and i think as i said it's the, the system the system does what it does it's been tackled in a certain way we've got our roadmap and i'm talking about flow here i believe i'm talking for some of the others as well on their behalf at the more complex end of the enterprise levels i, I think this is for i'm in and uh, to find a solution to this and open active our system is, is i'm just being practical on this there's not we're not in a position where we're going to be able to amend this to fit this framework. I just, I just, I'm repeating the same things I have since the beginning of the call. So I just want that to be very clear. Yeah. So just to just to to make it super clear, then you're saying 
it, it's up to Ivan or Open Active data in you know someone in the intermediaries basically so between the data publishers and data consumers that's 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 your 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 point um is this is still, this is still in the category sorry that's still in the category of who does the work to make the thing work when we come up with the solution whatever the solution is so they're still separate problems and we would hope i mean i don't know what your view on this sam is but we'd hope in five years time when you've got your you know various clients under control that you might be able to you know make changes necessary to make it easy for the sector to move forward. I mean, we want to make sure the sector is accessible in the longer term. It's just that you're talking about a short-term blocker here, which maybe I'm in could help with and others might want to for one or two years. But we want the long view surely to be standardized sector, which is easy for innovators to come in uh, and access. Absolutely, it is the long-term view. And that's why we're creating our own API, as I've said since the beginning of the sort of totally like that but as i said the sector is going through a crisis there's certain things which have to be done um we did a major from an open place standpoint we did a huge launch with gll earlier in march you can imagine how busy things are so trying to find a solution to this but it's like where's that going to come from in terms of resource because there's just a massive constraint for us as, as, as i guess there would be for anyone else um it's not easy times nick is it no no, no, you could, no, but you're talking. I mean, you're, the, the thing is, I mean, doesn't have any more resources spare than, than you do, right? It's not like we have like magic. This is the thing. It's, we can have the resource challenge if everyone's got no resources. We're all stuck. It's a recession. What do we do? Blah, 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 blah. Absolutely right. No one's got resources. Who pays for it? No one's got money, right? It's, well, these are all the same problems everyone has. But, the, but the, that's a different question. Who does it? And I think that should be case by case based on, you know, whatever the negotiations are in separate commercial land. Because it's also not really the scope of this call to talk about who does the work, who can cry, you know, the, the loudest about resource challenges, right? Which I fully respect and feel myself. Don't worry, we all have that same problem. Um, but the but the other side of it, I suppose, is that what do we do? And I think that's the focus of this call: is what's the solution to it, rather than obviously who does it, which I, may I'd be like, a separate problem. Before like. we get on to the solution and those options in our last few minutes, I just want to ask Sam once more. So we have. Um, is all the data, and this the answer is no, I think we, we've talked about it already, 130 or so. Uh, in, some of those uh, activity providers do not want to open up. You, you, you gave a few examples, okay? Yeah, they don't, no, no. Understood. Of the rest, you know, what is stopping the data from coming out, even if it's in a format, in, in your own format, if you like, not um, the compliant format? You know, is, is, is that happening? Our original thought was that this would just be Manchester. So we agreed recently that it would go across London and we'd monitor the impact of that and various others. Um, you've got to understand there's a cost. Um, when our servers get hit, hosting, support, there's a cost here. Um, so if we're going to open up the whole estate, it potentially, if it's not going to have too much of an impact on cost or it's something that open play can absorb. But I can tell you, as I said to you, it's hard times. So it's not... Yeah. So, it's, it's, there is there is an implication there. I don't, I don't think people realise at times that when you are on this side, as on the Gladstone side, extends and various others, obviously you do your best and do all the work you can, but you do have to support this. Um, and there is, a, there is a true cost to that when you do that. Um, so, yeah, there, there are, I'm just highlighting there are challenges. Yeah, so we have, um, for Manchester and London, you have done that work to transform your internal scheduling systems into something that um, you know is coming out as high frequency sessions um, but for the rest of the country you have not yet no and that's the cost you're talking about so yes uh, okay and you know from the point of view of understanding the problem I'm in a much much better position so so th that's really helpful um, for the last couple of minutes we just I'm just going to put these options out there, although I don't think we'll get much discussion, but we may have covered them all already. So um, option one, uh, presenting this, this kind of information as a session series with a high frequency flag. So those people building user interfaces to present the activities can handle them slightly differently and you know remove some of that duplication that, that uh, when they present them. And there is a flag, I think, that's that's already been produced uh, in beta. The same option two is to use the facility side of it, which is missing some of those feeds, uh, some of the things like age restriction, et cetera. Um, and then the third option 
which Nathan mentioned earlier on, is to create something that matches the reality that that this this case uh, represents, and and use that. The fourth option is some kind of transformation, which is what you're doing internally and bearing the cost there at the moment. Sorry, and how, uh, Howard, that's not a fourth option. That's that's the whatever the if there's that's an implementation question. So whoever does the translation needs to translate it into something. The question yeah. is, what is that something? And so there are three options here that we need to decide on from a spec perspective. And then there's obviously a lot of um, these kind of fractious commercial conversations because no one's got money or time to and figure out how we get it done. Thank you for that clarification. I think unless anyone has any anything else to wonder, I don't, we, we could possibly leave it there. We, we've got to explore the problem in, in its many forms. So, um, and the impact. So if there's an impact on user experience. There's an impact in that it's preventing GLL from opening up a chunk of data um, and that opening up in the way that they have for Manchester and Westminster or London has caused grief on their side and cost. In, and that GLL are not the only ones facing this problem. So it's density, or you know, fast tickets, density, bookings. So we need to kind of move towards a solution. And there are three there on the screen. I don't know. Let's leave it there, I think, um, and, and kind of give it some thought. If there's any any thoughts, final thoughts, any any kind of follow up actions that um, that that we can take it centrally to kind of. Well, it might be worth um, it might be worth us thinking about the next call, and if we wanted to have you know any technical representation from uh, any other organisations here to discuss which of those three. As I mentioned, if we, I think it's been good to, for people to air their commercial. <laughs> let's say grievances <laughs> in this discussion. So we've got an opportunity for everyone to understand the kind of context we're operating in. And that's probably quite good for this whole phase, to be honest, to understand that that's, you know, that's the reality here. We're going to have to work with that as we go, go forward. Um, and obviously, obviously that's constraining some organizations more than it is others um, relative to, you know, how much they're impacted. And so um, is it worth us thinking about, for the next call who we can get on here to basically bottom out the technical solution one two or three or another one if we come up with another way of modeling it um so that we can then have what we you know are getting to and then the commercial conversations can start within all the various places that need to happen and some of those will be gll and 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 everyone active and um and gladstone etc and flow but some of them will be um with smaller systems that might just be able to get on with it and do it you know um, depending on their timescales. So we've got to remember that although this call, because of who has been available today, is skewed towards big operators, there are a number of systems engaged in this that are not the big off operating systems. And they might have capacity because um, obviously everyone's got their own roadmaps, everyone's got their own challenges. Um, so um, we've got to be mindful to move this forward to unblock it for the ecosystem uh, so that we can then all work separately to figure out how we do our bits. Okay. Um, I think I, I will share an agenda, but it's likely to be a month from, from today, you know, or two fortnights uh, for a session, or we can explore having a you know, an additional a technical session to kind of dive into this if it, if, if the timing doesn't work. Um, but I'll follow up by email. But just to say thank you all for your for your input. Um, Quite a challenge, uh, but at least I've got a much better understanding of, of where we are. So thank you very much, everyone. Thanks. 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 Thanks.